Would you believe that nearly half of your customers are going online to confirm that your products are in stock before they'll ever consider going to your store? Hey, I'm Brian Kaplan, your dedicated trainer for the Grow with Google program. And in today's Grow with Google class, I teach you all about selling online with e-commerce tools. You're going to want to pay attention because I show you a special tool that saves you so much time in publishing your products up on Google Search, Google Images, Google Shopping, and even Google Lens. You ready? Here we go. So the first thing I want you to realize is that every day, hundreds of millions of people turn to Google to find, discover, and shop. That's not just Google search. People discover products when they browse Google news feeds, watch YouTube videos, check Gmail. And the research shows that online shopping is on the rise. In fact, shoppers go online first in six out of 10 shopping occasions. Online shopping drives visits to stores too. A global survey found that 45% of shoppers buy online and then pick up in store. And let me ask all of you, have you ever done that? Have you ever ordered online and then picked up in store? It could have been for groceries. It could have been for an actual product at a home improvement store. Let me know in the questions box. Have you ever shopped online and then picked up in store? Marsha has, John has, Jamie has. Well, we got some J's in here. We've got Matt who has, we have Sarah. Okay, you have, right? Well, guess what? If you have a physical retail location, your customers can too, but that doesn't mean you have to have that physical location in order to have an e-commerce site. So retailers need to show their products online because it drives sales. Nearly 60% of global purchases were prompted by something that the shoppers saw online. And people wanna know before they go especially after the past 15, 16 months we've had, people want to do their due diligence online, research, get a really good idea before they're going to leave the comforts of home and go to a store. It's now been hardwired into our head. Let's do a little bit more research before we venture out. 46% of shoppers confirm inventory online before visiting a store, really important. The last thing you want is for someone to see that your products in store, in stock, they get there, oh, sorry, we don't have it, we ran out. That's how you lose a customer real fast. The takeaway, we wanna get our products online even if the sales happen offline. And I see a whole bunch of you, even more, Mark and Paris and Nancy and Marek and Mona and Vrishali, all of you, yes, you've all bought online and then picked up in store. Here's something crazy. You might not think of this, but I want you to write this down, please. The average online shopping journey has over 140 touch points. I'll say that again. The online shopping journey for an average consumer has over 140 touch points. Each touch point influences what people buy and who they buy it from. So this slide right here lists just some of the touch points on Google where a US-based consumer may interact. It includes Google search and images, business profiles on Google, the shopping tab, shopping ads, and even experimental places like Google Lens. So I just want you to understand, it's not as linear as it used to be. Oh, you know, I ran out of nails. I'm gonna go down to the hardware store and cut nails. Oh, I ran out of nails. Okay, what kind of nail do I need? So now I'm gonna research nails. Maybe I'm gonna watch a video about drywall nails versus wood nails versus metal screws. All of a sudden I'm in this rabbit hole of nails. Then, oh, I have the hardware store down the street, but then I saw that there are better reviews at the hardware store a mile further. You see, people are considering more, they're exploring more and they're evaluating more because there's so much information online. So 140 touch points on average. So how do you do it? How do you get your products to appear on Google? Let's start first with the business profile on Google using a tool that used to be called Google My Business. Now they're called business profiles on Google. For anyone who isn't familiar with the tool, here's a quick overview. If you've ever gone on Google, whether on your phone or on a desktop or laptop computer, you typed in, you're looking for a business near me. In this case, we're using the example of the Spice House in Chicago. So we're gonna be talking about spices for the next 40 minutes, okay? Now, 
It could be you're looking for a restaurant near me. Maybe you had a leak in your house and you're looking for a plumber near me. Your car just went on the fritz. You're looking for a mechanic near me. How many of you have ever done a near me search? Type in the words near me if you've ever done a near me search. And there they go. Near me, near me, near me. It's like a waterfall. Near me, near me, near me. Probably I'm venturing to guess 99% of us in this class have done a near me search. Or you look for a specific type of product or a service or a business category. Those are called local searches. Now, when you do a local search, one of the places or one of the tools that shows up in Google is the business profile. You see it on the right hand side of the screen, right where my mouse is. So it shows pictures, it shows the name, has links to go to the website, get directions if it's a retail store, call, you can see the reviews. Powerful, powerful tool. If any of you, and I want you to, if you don't know what this is or you haven't created one and you have a local business where you service your community, whether you have a retail store that's brick and mortar physical, people can walk into, or if you're a service-based business, it could be anything from a home services person like HVAC or plumber to professional services like a lawyer or a realtor, a salon, a spa, massage, any of those you need to have a business profile on Google. And I'm gonna be sending a link after this. We have classes coming up where I teach you how to create your business profile. So if you don't have one, you need one. If you do have one, one thing you may not realize is that you can add products. Depending on your business category, you would have the ability to add products to your business profile on Google. And notice here, we see a photo, we're gonna see actually a title of the product, we can add in a price range, a lot of information that actually shows up right on this business profile. So no longer are people just seeing the general information about our business, now they can dive down into exactly what products we have to offer so we can actually get them to do more touch points, get closer to buying from us. Now, of course, before you use many of Google's products and services, you need to be signed into your Google account. If you have a Google account, let's say you use Gmail, you've got a Google account. If you've ever created a Google Doc, Sheet, Slide, you have a Google account. If it doesn't sound familiar, you've never gone to google.com and signed in, at the bottom left, you can see accounts.google.com slash sign up. You can create a Google account completely free. You can use any email address, even AOL or Net Zero, if you'd like. All you need to do is have a Google account in order to do what I'm about to show you. So for today's workshop, I'm going, to assign, I'm going to assume you're signed into Google, you've already created and verified your business profile. And verification, again, we have a whole class on how to do it. You're basically requesting a postcard, it comes in the mail, you type in a code, and then you have proven that you own the business. So if you haven't done that, you're gonna to go to google.com slash business, and you'll be able to create a business profile. Again, I'll send you a link on this after this class. So what we can see is on the left-hand side, we're seeing that we're actually able to add in products. Now this is obviously a spice store, so they have the ability for, ad, for us to add products. If your business doesn't sell products, then you would not see this product tab. So it's based on your business category. Now when we add a product, I'm going to tell you some of the most important things. One, you're going to add the product to a category. So in this case, the essential spices collection is under the gifts category. You can have as many categories as you want, but the product is going to be added to one category. When you add the product, it's optional for you to set the price or the price range, not mandatory. You can add it if you want to. My suggestion is put the price up. It sets an example, it sets an expectation for the consumer. That way they're not surprised when they see the price. So if there's a range depending on, in this case, how many spices are in the collection, it might range from 50 bucks to 100 bucks. You'll put that in. It says here optional to add a description and optional to add a button. No, no, no. They are optional. I will tell you from experience, it would behoove you to make sure you add a description. When you add your description, you want to write a couple sentences about it. You want to talk about what is in the collection, 
what different spices? I'm seeing all these photos, but I don't have a magnifying glass. I can't read all those labels. So I would ask you to tell me all the spices I can expect in this collection. And optional to add a button like order online or buy. Listen, again, this is giving you the ability to show your product. Just understand the magnitude of this. Someone's in the, they're looking for a gift. They have, so my mom loves cooking, has a beautiful kitchen, has always been like a gourmet. So getting her spices makes total sense for a gift. And I can get her like Indian spices, like marsalas. I could get her some nice cooking salts. I could get her some really fancy foreign, you know, from the, the markets of, of Turkey type of thing. So I want to go on. I want to find her spices. It makes sense that if I'm looking and I found the spice house and I see this product, that you give me a link that pulls me right to your website, right to the page where I can order. You've made it super simple for me. I don't have to go and click around all these different times. I click once, I can order on your site. So always add a button or a link. Now the last thing, up here, upload a photo. Always, always, always upload a photo. If you don't have professional photos, that's okay. Try your best. I'm assuming you have a smartphone or you know someone that has a smartphone with a pretty good camera, take a photo of the product. People need to visualize the product before they'll consider it. So you definitely want to make sure you have a good photo of the product so people can consider it. Once you're done, you'll click on save. You're going to do that again and again for each of your products. Now, this is an investment of your time. But I will tell you, in all the hundreds of business profiles we've built for clients and all the products we've added, it has helped our clients grow. Now, if someone is looking for a spice collection, now they're going to be able to actually see the Spice House has a chance of showing up because it added that product. You're actually getting SEO benefit, search engine optimization benefit. You're telling Google, hey, Google, this is our business profile, and here's a product we have at our business. Will you show it? Now Google's going to say, sure. Here's a picture. Here's the title. Here's the price range, 24 essential spices. And if I clicked on learn more, I'm brought right to your site. I can buy it right there. So again, to set up your own business profile, if you do not have one, go to google.com slash business. I'll also be sending that email. Keep an eye out for it where I send you links on how to build your profile. Okay, but what about all the other places on Google where products can surface? That's where we're gonna talk about our Google Merchant Center. Retailers use Merchant Center to make their store and their product information available to shoppers across Google. Now the cool thing is Google Merchant Center is free and you don't need to advertise to add your products either. However, if you do want to advertise and show shopping ads on Google, you first need to set up a Merchant Center account. Either way, if you sell products, you have them online, you're going to want to create a Merchant Center account. I'm going to show you how. So Merchant Center, it's a free tool that helps you upload your store and all of your product data to Google. It makes it available for Google Shopping, Shopping Ads, and other Google services. Now you're going to add your products in one place, Merchant Center. Then these products are eligible to appear in multiple places across Google. I'm going to show you a few of the different places you might see them. First, products and extra product information may appear in Google's search results. So on this slide, you can see a series of product images with information beneath them at the top of the Google search results page. Now, these are shopping ads, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Google's organic results typically include basic information, a title, a description, and a link. Some results may show more. So this extra information is called a rich snippet. A rich snippet. I'm going to make sure you write that down. This is something cool. So a rich snippet, R-I-C-H, like Richie Rich, snippet, S-N-I-P-P-E-T, snippet. A snippet can really help a product stand out. So on this slide, you see that the Spice House's ground fenugreek seeds, which I've never even knew existed, and you're gonna hear fenugreek for the rest of the presentation, so get ready. These ground fenugreek seeds are in the search results. It's jazzed up with extra info. So it has a star rating, that's called a review snippet. 
It also includes product details like price and availability of the seeds. It's pretty cool. So how can you help Google add that extra information to your products when they appear in Google search results? First thing you wanna do, and write this down, if you already have your products uploaded online, you wanna to talk to your web developer or your marketing company that help you set up the site and ask them about adding structured data markup. Structured data markup. Do not get overwhelmed. I know these are brand new terms. All you have to do is talk to your marketing person or your web person and ask them to look into adding structured data markup to your website. In a nutshell, structured data is a labeling system added to your web pages. The labels help Google and other web platforms automatically understand your site and pull in information like the product data, like the reviews, like the price point, like in stock. This is really super important. If you're constantly uploading new products, your web person can create a template on your site and make sure that that structured data markup is always added in. When we're creating e-commerce sites, it's what we do. It's a best practice and it helps Google better understand the idea of your product, what it is, and even get that extra information that will help you sell through. Bonus, if you have structured data on your website, it can be used to automatically update products in the Merchant Center. I could spend the rest of the workshop talking about technical details and I won't because your minds will turn to mush, okay? But if you wanna work on improving how your products can appear in Google's organic search results, definitely set up Merchant Center and talk to your web person about adding structured data to your website. So next, products from Merchant Center can appear for free in the shopping tab. How many of you have ever clicked on the shopping tab? Type in shop till you drop if you've ever clicked on the shopping tab. Type in the word shop till you drop if you've ever in the search clicked on the shopping tab and opened up a page like this. We've got some shop till you drops, haven't, no problem. So you're gonna to wanna to take a look at this. If you're ever looking for a product and you're in a tight spot, right? Great example. I found a huge wasp nest under my porch and it's like, I don't want my kids out there until those things are gone. So I went on Google, typed in wasp spray cause I'm not waiting two days for it to come. I gotta find it. And then I went on Google shopping and found all the local stores that had it available in stock, showed me the price, showed me the store. I ran right to the store, got it sprayed, they're gone. So this is where someone might have an immediate need and they're looking for local stores or they're just looking around, it's another touch point. Remember 140 touch points on average for each online shopping experience. They might be clicking here and looking around and figuring out who has fenugreek seeds. If any of you ever use fenugreek, please tell me what you use it for because I have no idea. So in the shopping tab, People would go to Google, do a search, click on shopping, and then they see all these different products. Now, again, this is free, but it's pretty cool because now your product image is showing, your price, the name of your business, the description, even some characteristics, powdered, dried, even here known as, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that, in Persian fenugreek leaves have the scent of a sun-dappled meadow. Wonderful. So. There you go, that's the shopping tab, a really good way for your products to show up. Another way is Google Images. Type in images if you've ever looked on Google Images. I'm sure many of you have, and I'm sure I'm gonna see images again and again. Now with Google Images, people would go to google.com, they'd search, and then they would click on the Images tab. Many of you have probably looked through images before, but here's something cool. When you put your product into the Google Merchant Center. Again, it's free. Now when someone sees the image of your product, they also see a little tab with a little shopping tag and it says product. They can click it and be brought right to the product page on your e-commerce store. Listen, of anything I'm teaching you today, the two things I want you to take away is this. One, you wanna add every product on your business profile on Google every product because it helps with your SEO. Two, you wanna make sure you're putting your products in Merchant Center. 
it's free you're loading all the information and now you're showing up in google image search so if someone is in the market for fenugreek seeds we all know someone then they're going to be looking they're going to see this image and now they have a direct link to the product page someone searches visually rather than text a lot of us are visual they click now they're on that same page they can buy from us they're on our website this is powerful and for you to show up in google images this is free this isn't an ad you haven't spent any money putting it up in merchant center and now showing up in google images completely free you're getting your products out there so people can see them at all those different touch points the last one i'm going to show you is google lens many of you may not have heard of it and that's okay with google lens you can use your phone's camera to search in a visual way it's basically like searching with an image instead of words really cool and if you don't know how to do it just go and go on to google so open up your phone go onto your browser or open the google app and type in google lens you'll be able to find it so this is an example of an experimental place where products may appear on google no guarantee they're going to but they may appear on google here's how it's working you're basically adding that product photo up to google merchant center google merchant center says hey google lens we got a photo this is of ground fenugreek seeds check it out if anyone is ever looking for ground fenugreek seeds and happens to take a photo with Google Lens, you might show up. So in this slide, hey, what do you know? The product photo shows up and it shows the Spice House's website. Probably not the best example. Maybe, you know, something like a can of spray, like the wasp spray or a wrench or something like that you may have a little bit better success. Google Lens probably won't give you uh, your products the same volume of exposure as regular Google search. But it's an example of how Google tries to show relevant products in places where customers may be looking. So again, you go to the Google app, you can download it for free. And if, if you guys don't have it, it's a great app. You just download it from App Store or the Google Play and type in Google. And the Google Lens is a part of that app. It's part of the camera app. You just use your camera, scan something. Like I have a Lysol bottle right here. I could scan the Lysol bottle and then it would show me all the pictures of Lysol bottles and potentially where I can buy them. Last but not least, Merchant Center helps retailers advertise products on Google. So you've probably seen shopping ads before. Right here, it's denoted by ads. It sits above what we call the organic listings and we're seeing a carousel. Think of a carousel like the carousel you see with the horses at the carnival. Same thing, you can cycle through, it goes round. So you click on that arrow, you can swipe and keep seeing more and more different products. So in this, in this case, it looks like the Spice House has a monopoly on fenugreek. So in, you're gonna see all the different fenugreek spices that the Spice House offers, wonderful. You could click on one, if, you, if someone were to click, the advertiser, in this case, the Spice House, is going to pay for that click, right? So it's getting someone to come to your site, you're paying for that placement and potentially you're paying for that click. One thing I need you to note, you're only paying if someone clicks on the ad. If they don't, if they see it a thousand times and never click on it, you never pay. Only if they take their mouse or take their finger and click on that ad and they're brought to your fenugreek ground seeds page. So shopping campaigns help you to promote online and local inventory. It doesn't necessarily have to be on your website. But if you've loaded it up into Merchant Center, now you can showcase those ads. So here's a high level overview of how Merchant Center works. You're gonna create a free account. Again, you're gonna to have to be logged into your Google account. Next, you'll upload your products. And then those products can appear across Google. Merchant Center has an online setup guide and it's available, let's see if we have it here. If you go to g.co slash merchant center, you'll be able to get more information on getting set up. So right here at the bottom, g.co slash merchant center. Leaving that for you for a second, just so you can write it down. So when you go to g.co slash merchant center, once you create your account, you'll type in your business name, choose your country, very important, and your time zone. Then you're going to choose. You have three options here. You can select checkout options that apply to your business. 
do you want Merchant Center to send people to your website? So do you want customers to be able to check out on your website? If you currently have an e-commerce store, like a Shopify site or big commerce, you had answered before which ones you have. If you want them to check out on your website, you would check this box. They'll go to your website and buy it. The second option, on Google. Selecting on Google means customers can see your products on Google and buy them there. In this case, you don't even need a website. You would use a service we call Buy on Google to complete the transaction. Just so you know, the service is still in pilot, so stay tuned for more info as it becomes available. It's a limited rollout right now, but you might be seeing it sooner or later. And if you do, really cool, people can check out right on Google. Google doesn't make any commission fees. Only the third party fees paid to your credit card processor are charged. Finally, if you select at your local store, customers can see your products on Google, but are then directed to visit your local store to buy them. So it even says, okay, hey, at my local store, it's 1.2 miles away. This is what they would see. It's 1.2 miles away in stock in San Jose, the Spice House. You can change these checkout options in your account at any time. So you're not locked in. You're not stuck with it. My suggestion is the more options you have, and if you can do all of these, do them. It's allowing customers to visit your site, add to a cart, or visit your local store if you have one. Next, you can link Merchant Center to third-party platforms. When we say a third-party platform, that means something that's outside of the Googleverse, okay? So in this case, it might be Shopify, which we'll talk about in a second. Maybe you accept payments on PayPal. You could link there as well. Now, this simplifies the setup process. Shopify as an option we'll talk about in a second. You can add more tools and integrations at any time as they become available. And once you've created your Merchant Center account, you're brought to this screen. This is the Merchant Center overview page. If you're just setting up Merchant Center, you're going to see prompts that are displayed at the top to help you complete setups. So you see little bubbles pop up saying, hey, do this, do this. The left navigation also shows products. So that's where you can add and manage products. Performance to view reports who's clicking on what, what's going on, and growth where you can access suggestions for improving product visibility and driving more sales on Google. If you selected the checkout options on your website or at your local store, you have to verify your website before your products can appear on Google. So there's three ways to do it. You can use Google Analytics or Tag Manager. So Google Analytics is another free tool. If you have a website, highly, highly recommend you have Google Analytics. In fact, again, I'm sending you an email. It will have a list of events or a link where, to a list of events. Definitely, if you have not set up Google Analytics or you don't know how to use it, come to that event. It's where you can learn to measure your marketing. But once you have Google Analytics installed on your website, it makes it so much easier to use other Google tools. So you can use Google Analytics in order to connect Google Merchant Center. You can also add an HTML file to your website. If you use Shopify, which we're going to talk about in a second, the website is automatically verified when connected to Merchant Center. If all the stuff that I just said on this slide makes no sense to you, if you have a web person or a marketing person or a tech person, you can talk to them and have them work through this with you. So no worries. Now that Merchant Center is set up, the next step is to add your products. So you're gonna start by clicking products in the left navigation. You see that right there. Then you can click on the button to add individual products or create a product feed and upload multiple products at once. When you add an individual product, you'll enter the information about it in Merchant Center. So you might enter in the title, the link, the price. Those are required. And then you have a lot of optional fields too. So for example, there's even something called variants. An example of a variant, let's say you sell shirts. Well, okay, you have one shirt design, but you have it in white, blue, red, and yellow. Those are four variants, white, blue, red, and yellow. Then you've got variants for sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. You see how all of a sudden you have all these variants. Well, Google Merchant Center allows you to add those variants. So if you have multiple sizes and colors, you can add those in instead of adding a separate entry for small white shirt, 
small yellow shirt, small blue shirt, that would just be madness. You would be there forever. So it's pretty cool that you can use variants in order to shorten your time. The one thing you need to note, if you add up your products individually, you have to edit them individually. So if you go in and manually add one product, then you've got to go in and manually edit it if you have to make any changes. Now, there's something we have called product feeds. Product feeds make it much easier to add multiple products to Merchant Center. Let's take a quick look. A product feed is a file that contains all the information about your products that you want to show on Google. So the file includes information about your products, which we call attributes. To create a product feed, you would start by entering some basic information like language. So, okay, our store is in English, we're in the United States, good, we're gonna do that. Next, you'll give your product feed a name. This is just for internal organization. Be as descriptive as you want, no one else is gonna see it but you. You're gonna choose how you wanna add products to your product feed. If you're just getting started, one of the easiest ways is using Google Sheets, and there's a template provided. So you could use a spreadsheet, and then it has columns for each thing, product title, price, link, so on and so forth. So spreadsheet's gonna be your best friend here. You can use Google Sheets. If you select Google Sheets, Merchant Center is gonna show you two options. Use a template, or if you already have an existing spreadsheet, you can do that. You would choose the second option if you already have an existing product feed that's set up to work in Merchant Center. Chances are most of you don't, so we're gonna assume that you're starting from scratch. You'll choose the template. Now there's a link to instructions. You can see right here, hey, okay, we have product ID, title, description, link, condition, price, availability. So these are the different predetermined uh, attributes that you would add to a product. You do not need to add all of them, okay? Just so you know, you don't need to add all of them. But the more information you provide, the better. For example, if you're selling Let's say I'll use my brother-in-law as an example. He owns a barber shop and he's now selling makeup and uh, you know beer gels and, and oils and colognes. Well, if he just said title, you know, nice cologne. This cologne smells nice. Hey, go to www.queencitybarbershop.com/nice cologne. Okay, that's good. But what if he could add in the brand? What if he could add a link to an image so that people can see it? Those are the things we want to see. It's going to help people with more touch points. Remember, 140 touch points on average, more touch points so they can figure out if they want to buy from you. Now, you can see, too, that there are links right here, what you need to add in your product feed. So you click on that. It will give you instructions, and it gives you the instructions that you can click on for the Google Sheet. So right there, baked into this template, it has the instructions for you. Just click on those links and follow them. This sounds a bit technical. At the end of the day, you're simply creating a spreadsheet with product information. It's the same thing you've probably done on a post-it note or a notepad and you've written down, okay, here are our products. Maybe you have a spreadsheet from Microsoft Excel. Same thing, we're just adding it in here and then you're uploading it and now your products are magically broadcast out all over Google so that you can drive more eyes on your brand. Once the merchant center is set up and, is, and it's complete, your product can appear on Google in many places. We talked about search, Google images, shopping, shopping ads, and Google Lens. There's still an important topic that we haven't addressed, how to actually sell the products on your own website. So many small businesses use third-party e-commerce tools to power their online stores. Today, I'm gonna show you Shopify. Now, just to show you too, there are plenty of options out there. So take a look again at the poll. Hey, a number of you are using Shopify or BigCommerce. Those are the two leaders that a lot of people hear about. Some of you may have a WordPress site. Some of you may be using Squarespace e-commerce. Some of you might be using a smaller outfit like Wix, Weebly, GoDaddy. The majority of you, the lion's share, haven't built it yet. I want you to understand that even though I'm going to be showing you Shopify, that does not mean that you need to build a Shopify site. Whatever works for you, whatever works for your budget. These next slides, they're going to be very Shopify specific as a kind of preface. Uh, just so you know, you do not need to choose Shopify, but I'll show you some of the finer points. So a lot of small businesses leverage Shopify because they can grow their customer base. It has good integrations. When we talk about an integration, 
imagine it like a digital handshake. Shopify extends its hand and then you might have MailChimp or Constant Contact or Klaviyo, email marketing providers that extend their hands and they can do a digital handshake so they work together. So Shopify is great because it has all these different integrations. It allows you to grow with other tools. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many business owners found themselves needing to pivot to stay afloat. And many offline only retailers turn to online sales. Some have come out on the other side even stronger thanks to diversifying their business. Let me ask you, did any of you actually pivot and start selling online as a result of the pandemic? Let me know in the, in the uh, questions box. While you're typing in, I'm gonna give you a quick story too. So no secret, we have a marketing agency. We've worked with thousands upon thousands of clients. One story that I actually, uh, I think is a great story that, that um, came from the pandemic. This multi-generational business, it's called Meyer the Hatter. Amazing family, five generations of, of hat makers and hat sellers located down in good old Nolens, Nola, New Orleans, Louisiana. They're right in the French Quarter, have the largest hat shop in the South. I mean, this family knows hats and they've had tons and tons of people wearing their hats. Pandemic hits. A lot of us have gone through this. All of a sudden, foot traffic dries up. People aren't outside. No tourists coming to New Orleans. And, I, you know, we, we had some really difficult calls with them because we've been working with them on their email and some other things. And for years... They'd said, hey, we have a website, you know, it's good enough. It's good enough. And finally, they started feeling the strain. And that was when after a few years of putting it off, we finally were able to build a brand new e-commerce website for them. Now, one of the things that happened, you know, these calls, it, it kind of was saying, the message was, hey, it's been five generations of hat makers. I feel like it stops at five generations. And that resonated. We, we couldn't let that happen. So I want you to understand even five generations, and they always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, in five generations, they finally, the youngest generation was a proponent saying, hey, we need to do that new website. They pivoted from selling just in store to online. They grew their sales. They're seeing huge success in their online market. They still now have a lot of tourism going down to New Orleans, which is great, but now they've diversified. The one thing that I've learned from that is that, you know, obviously perseverance pays off in having an optimistic attitude, but also making sure that you're getting your product out there in as many ways as possible. We saw more and more retailers that only had a physical store changing up to e-commerce. And if that's you and you're kind of on that precipice, you're thinking, hey, am I going to do it or not? I'm telling you, it will behoove you if you do it right. I've shown you some really cool things to start selling your products, even through Google, if that's rolled out to you. Now I'm going to show you Shopify as an option. So Shopify allows you to sell your physical products in your own personalized website. This is an example. Again, guess what? The Spice House. Wow, surprise, right? So the Spice House, you may notice, it looks super professional and easy to navigate. Most of these e-commerce platforms allow you to build a really nice looking site. A lot of it comes down to your photos. So my thing for you and my expert tip is to make sure that you have good photos of your products. If you're selling physical products, hey, listen, if you have the budget, get a photographer in that can take product photos. If you don't have the budget, then maybe watch some YouTube videos to learn how you can do your own product photos. Get some nice lighting. Use your smartphone. The better the photos, the easier the sale. I just want you to understand. And let me ask you a question, too. Maybe some of you can answer this for me. Have you ever gone online? You're looking up a product or maybe you went on Craigslist or somewhere else and you're looking to buy something. And the photos were really crummy. They were fuzzy. They were pixelated. If, you, if that's ever happened to you, how did you feel? How was your level of confidence in buying from that particular seller? Was it high? Did you feel really confident that those crummy photos, it's actually a really good product? 
or did you start second guessing and questioning the actual quality of that product because the photos and the imagery was questionable as well? Let me know in the questions box. I've got low, I've got, oh, that's happened to me. Craigslist, you, you've got to be kidding, of course, all the time. Marketplace, yes, 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 low, low, low. So the same thing, you're seeing beautiful photos here. It doesn't mean you need to have a professional photographer that's charging you thousands of dollars an hour. If you have a friend that's a pretty good photographer that might have a good camera, bring them in. Give them a gift card or buy them lunch and have them take some photos for you. It'll be a fun bonding experience, but invest in your imagery. It's how people are making their buying decisions. So to get started with Shopify, you go to shopify.com. You can create an account. You get a 14-day free trial. Here's my suggestion. If you're going to create any trial account, whether it's on Shopify or the others, have everything in place. I come from a long line of cooks, chefs, culinary artists. One thing that was drilled into me, mise en place, everything in place. A good chef is going to have their ingredients, their cutting board, their cutlery, their pans, their pots, all of that stuff set up and ready to go. Because otherwise, you're scurrying around the kitchen looking for a knife, looking for this, looking for this, trying to get this, grabbing a can of something, dropping it on your foot, expletives come out of your mouth. Instead, you have everything ready. If you only have 14 days to build a store to really prove the concept and feel good about using a platform like Shopify, have everything in place so that you can load it up really quick. Also give yourself the time. Don't just go after this, start a free trial, and then, oh, you know, okay, I got 14 days, I'll do it next week. And then next week rolls around, you know what, I'm busy today, I'll do it tomorrow. And before you know it, the tr free trial's over and you didn't get to try it out have everything in place and schedule time, whether it's early in the morning, you're waking up a couple of hours earlier, a couple hours later at night that you're staying up, build it out, have that time so that you get it and you can see it and feel it. And now you're actually getting that materialization of your site. Big, big thing that I see, a, a kind of a, a, I won't say a mistake, but something that a lot of people do where they have room for opportunity there. When you build it out, you just talk about what you're selling, what's your current revenue, if any, which industry will you be operating in? And of course, for someone like me, I would say, yes, I'm designing for a client. Once you create your account, you'll be in the admin section. It's like your cockpit or your control center for your website. From here, you can modify your theme. They have free themes, the, the kind of look and feel. You could buy a theme if you have the budget, add your products, view and fulfill your orders, create email marketing campaigns within Shopify, it also integrates with other email marketing providers. And you're going to pop in your payment delivery and other options for your products. Now, when we talk about products on Shopify, we mean not just physical products. Remember at the beginning, I told you, it could be digital goods. You might sell an online course. You might be selling PDFs. To give you an idea, I'm a marketing agency. Guess what? We're rebuilding our site in Shopify because it makes sense. So doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing you can hold in order for you to create an e-commerce shopping site like Shopify. When you add products to Shopify, they'll automatically be ready to sell across your channels, social, all of those different things, and even the Google channels that we just talked about. If you're an established business and you have a spreadsheet of your inventory, you have the option to upload that. But let's say, just like 60% of you, you're brand new and you're just creating your products. Just to give you an idea, and this is in most platforms, you can add in a title, add in a description. For your product description, have at least two to three sentences. The more information you add, the better, okay? In this case, ground Jamaican allspice berries. It even talks about where it's harvested from, what it is. So it's using those different words, ground allspice berries. If anyone was ever looking for ground allspice berries, it's in the product title, it's in the product description, now we have a better chance of showing up. This is SEO in action, search engine optimization in action. Once you add up your products, you can connect them to Google. Like I'd said, Shopify allows you to connect your customers wherever they happen to be, and it allows you to connect with Google seamlessly for free. To add Google, you would just go into your sales channels and you say, hey, I wanna add it to Google. You click on the plus sign, it will take you through a process. When you add Google as a sales channel, 
It's creating a real-time sync, not like a kitchen sync. I mean synchronization, S-Y-N-C. So now Shopify is communicating in real time with Google. If you make changes to your products in Google Merchant Center, or if you make changes to your products in Shopify, they automatically synchronize. They automatically sync in all of your channels. So you only need to make the change once and it broadcasts everywhere. To set up the Google channel, you'll sign in with your Google account. Remember you had to be signed in before. You're just gonna say, hey, okay, click connect Google account, you'll log in and then you'll be able to choose your Google Merchant Center. Now, cool thing, your Shopify store needs to meet a few requirements. First off, it has to be a Shopify store that is set up online and published, it needs to be published. You need to have relevant payment and contact information. There should be a, re a refund return policy and terms of service, and the countries and currencies you'll be selling in have to be established. So basically it's gonna give you that checklist and say, hey, you need to have all these things. If you haven't checked that box, it won't allow you to integrate until you do. And once your requirements are met, it's time to sync your product feed. Of course, you need your merchant center, then you'll click on get started. You'll link to your merchant center account and you're off to the races. Now it's showing you, okay, we're logged in with this account. Here's your merchant center account. Okay, we're gonna be doing all that, we're good. Now you're linked, your Merchant Center and your Shopify are syncing, they're synchronizing at this stage. What we wanna do, we need to just select the market that we're going into, which would be the US for most of us, and or the country, and then you're going to set your shipping settings. And finally, you can connect your Google Ads account. Now, your Google Ads account separate. You're gonna create it with your Google account, but this is a separate product, a separate tool that you're using. And that's, of course, as I'd shown you before, those shopping ads, it allows you to broadcast and promote your products in Google Ads. These are paid ads. The only thing that I'm showing you today uh, that you would be paying for besides your Shopify subscription because you have to pay Shopify for your subscription. Covered a lot today, my friends. But remember, both Google and Shopify are designed to make it as easy as possible to get started. My thing is this. A lot of information I just laid on you in a very short amount of time. And if you've come to my events before, you may have heard me say, listen, it's not that you have to do everything, you just have to do something. 